there's a halftime show, I think my third year, where it was, I don't even remember, I, it was some sort of medley of sorts. Um, and included in the medley was the Jurassic Park theme song, which is a pretty epic tune. And that weekend it rained a lot, and so we weren't actually allowed on the field for the halftime show, which is always really disappointing. You put all this work in learning that drill, and you can't go out and play it. But um, it was kind. Of, it was funny because during the actual halftime show, it wasn't raining, um, but it was still pretty cloudy and overcast. And I have this memory of playing that Jurassic Park theme song in this like soaring horn part, and it's so beautiful. And just as we're playing the like climax of this tune, the sun burst out from behind the clouds, and it was just like I felt like I was on top of the world. It, we played so proudly. It was just a really awesome moment that I don't know if it stuck out for anyone else that way, but for me that has always been a really cherished moment. Even now when I listen to the, that Jurassic Park theme song, I just feel this like swelling of emotion from that song and those, um, yeah, just that sort of epicness of the moment. Um, that's, that's a really <laughs> highlight for me, which is kind of funny. It probably passed in like a matter of seconds, but um, Kind of ingrained in my brain forever now. Um, I also had a funny kind of fleeting CMB halftime moment. Uh, I don't remember what year this was, but we were doing some kind of journey halftime show, so it could have easily been any any year. But it was a night game, and we were playing the second tune, so we were facing the student section, and the student section was like going crazy. They were totally paying attention to us and like loving every moment of what was happening. They were yelling and screaming and like singing along and at the end of the tune when we ended they just like, burst into applause and I just was like, this is it, they're finally paying attention to us, that everyone's watching, they're so into it. And then I kind of look over at the student section only to realize that Erica Seredny, who's the twirler at the time, was standing directly in front of them twirling three batons that were on fire and they were all just paying attention to her. So it was like coupled with this like really awesome moment coupled with this like, oh, way to go Erica, you're awesome. <laughs> so that was kind of a funny moment of being a little bit duped into what was actually going on. A funny thing that has pretty much nothing to do with the marching band but people who only know the band building will never get to experience was our office in New Hall was directly next to the wrestling practice room where in order to get pumped up they would blast music so you always had kind of an interesting soundtrack playing it could be anything from like hardcore rap to Miley Cyrus to country music just blasting and it was always a little peculiar saying like huh this is what gets wrestlers pumped up all right that's um, but, you know, I guess there's probably more peace and quiet in the band building. My second year of band camp is definitely my favorite year of band camp. Um, the Horns won that year. I definitely remember that. I don't remember if we won my third or fourth year, but the Horns definitely won my second year. And we just had so much fun and we got so into the competition. I think some highlights from that were when Cameron Blake did his belly flop. He, like did some kind of roll tuck belly flop thing. I'm pretty sure he injured himself from it, but it was pretty epic. And when Shanna Hoare sang her band camp blues song, look it up on YouTube, it is definitely worth the like 12 minutes or whatever our skit was. Cause that was funny, that song was only part of our skit. We did a whole weekend update SNL sort of thing. Um, and Shanna was the musical guest for that SNL. Um, and she, that was the first moment I realized that Shanna had a lot of potential to be um, a solo musician. Um, her ability to write clever lyrics is so evident in that song where she wove together all these jokes that had developed in the last four or five days into this one awesome song was just, I mean, it was hilarious. It was one of the best things that the horn section has ever been able to be a part of, I think. Um, so that was a, that's always going to be a great moment. Um, working with Hilary Blyer doing uniforms crew 
is always going to be something that stands out. No one particular moment, but we were both sort of in it to win it and took a lot of pride in um, keeping the uniforms organized and being super on top of that. And I think um, maybe in years past, uniform crew was something that you ended up with. And I think Hillary and I took a lot of pride in the uniforms crew and wanted to make it something to be proud of and something that people want to be a part of. So we had a lot of fun um, kind of making the best of what is a definitely a hard task at hand. They're just, it's tedious, it's long, it's uh, boring at times, but um, I think we tried to make the best of it and did a pretty good job of hopefully building something. Um, <laughs> things were a little harder then. Um, we didn't have the band building. We didn't have places to keep our uniforms. We didn't have places to set them up. So we were constantly loading and unloading and reloading and unloading and loading and unloading again. So um, we were moving everything around a lot while trying to keep everything organized and on top of things. So there were a lot of late nights and tired moments, but um, I still have mostly fond memories of the uniforms crew. I would like to... Um, let it be known that I did not blink or cheat in the staring contest that happened in whatever band camp that was where there were accusations flying in every direction that I blinked. But I stand by the fact that I did not. I consider myself an honest person. If I had, I would have walked away from that competition, but I didn't. Uh, but I will say I had a pretty unfair advantage in that my tear ducts are blocked and thus my tears don't drain and so my eyes are pretty much always moisturized, no blinking required. So um, Mr. Idzier told the horn section that there was going to be an event that night at um, Section Olympics that I specifically would have a leg up on. And I remember us trying to brainstorm about what it was and we could not figure out what it was. I was, like I said, sort of known for yelling at the band a lot when it came to uniforms time. I was like, is there gonna be like a yelling competition? I can't imagine that I'm gonna have that much of a leg up on it. Like, what else could it be? And I, we had no idea. And then as soon as they said staring contest, I, there was some first year in the section that was like, I think I can do this. And I just had one of those moments like, ha, step aside, <laughs> I'll take this one. <laughs> um, so that was a good moment. And it clicked as soon as it said staring contest. It was like, this is what it was um, heading towards. I always loved doing the guillotine, or as Mr. Cook liked to call it, the guillotine. Um, that was always fun. We never used it as much as I would have liked, in my opinion, but it's probably pretty dangerous for students and instruments alike, so it's probably why it's not used, but I think it looks awesome. That was always my favorite. Um, there are a couple funny little like dance moves that we did that when I hear those songs, even like on the radio or at a wedding or something, I just automatically go into them. There's a part in Ghostbusters where you like crouch down and like kind of do like a low U with your body and like I still do that dance for when I'm here Ghostbusters so um funny things that are sort of ingrained um one of my least favorite drill sets was when we did the stick figures um I think this is the first time the CMB ever did stick figures they've done it a couple times or at least once since then there's a cool drill set but we were packed in so we were like in very tight lines and we were um marching to take on me which is already a really quick pace for um a marching band song to march to um and then on top of that you're packed in really closely so it's a little nerve-wracking and then on top of that that halftime show it poured it poured so much. I don't think any woodwind players even played. I think they all tucked their instruments into their rain jackets. It's one of the only, I think it's the only time I've ever marched with a rain jacket on. And I remember being terrified that I was gonna fall in the mud. And because we were packed so close, it would just be one of those terrible domino effects because it had happened in rehearsal that week. And it was, it was bad. It was kind of a low point in rehearsal. And I was so <laughs> nervous to the point now, even when I hear that aha song, I kind of get like a tense up and like get nervous about it because I don't want to fall. 
<laughs> so that was one of my least favorite drills. It was a cool halftime show, but the experience of having to march it was terrible. My first year that we won, I'm pretty sure by one point in the last seconds of the game. And I don't think since that time I've ever felt like I was going to have a heart attack again. <laughs> that game, I, I was never big into sports before college. I wouldn't even necessarily call me big into sports now, but that was the first time I think I really got into a, a sporting event um, was that UVA football game. Um, any night game was always this wonderful. They all kind of blend together now, but the feeling that blends together is this air of excitement and anticipation of something awesome is going to happen and there are people throwing around sticks that are on fire that just add something cool to the halftime show so <laughs> um any night game was always a lot of fun i thought our uniforms always look cooler under the the lights the color sort of changes from a, a reddish orange to a truer orange and i always thought looking back at pictures at night games that the much men always kind of look cooler then i think the band is becoming more solidified. And I think I came into the marching band during that process. I, When I was a first year, the band was in its fourth year. Um, so certainly things were new. And I think there were pretty big leaps and bounds that were made year to year, from my first year to my fourth year, just in terms of what does high stepping look like? And what is the drill pattern that we're going to use? And what are some of the more established things that are going to happen? There were pretty big institutional changes year to year, but I think, you know, the gap of change from my first year to my second year was the biggest, and then, you know, the amount of change that happened from my second to third year decreased, and I think the amount of, like, really big changes that are happening is slowly decreasing, um, and it is improving the band overall. Um, having this stability and having a sort of expectations that students can come into, um, I think provides a lot of freedom to grow in, in a lot more visible ways to the outsider. I think the halftime shows that were produced this year were just like some of the best that I've seen the CMB do. And I think that having those established um, processes on an institutional level kind of allowed the marching band to these awesome halftime shows and um, make the most of the incredible musicians that they have. Um, I think because of that they're drawing better musicians and um, people were thinking a little more critically about the smaller details so the changes that are being made maybe are smaller but I think they're making um, pretty pretty impressive impacts. I think the most obvious way that CMB has impacted me is the friends that I got from the CMB. Um, but I think the CMB, more so than any other organization at UVA or any class at UVA, gave me a sense of what I can accomplish. Um, the amount of work I put into the CMB was not something that I would have done naturally, but I think the CMB pushed me to um, work really hard at it, and it gave me a sense of where my skills are and how hard I can work on something. Um, and that's something that was really embedded in me that has stuck with me.